And now we will learn how to import IIF files into QuickBooks Desktop. This video is a brief overview and you will have to decide if you want to study IIF programming on your own. There are some nice things about importing IIF files. You don't need any third-party software. You can import every possible type of transaction that goes into QuickBooks, and in those transactions, you can put a piece of information in every available data field. It will import into any version of QuickBooks Desktop, whether it's QuickBooks uh, Pro or QuickBooks Accountant or QuickBooks Retail, doesn't matter. The problem is it takes study time and practice, and you have to learn code almost as if you're learning programming. You also have to know some basic accounting like debits and credits in order to really understand what you're looking at. You can use an Excel spreadsheet to create your IIF file, which we're going to do now, or actually which I have already done, to prepare for this video. You input the specific code, like programming, and then you input the data, which are the details of the transactions. So let me show you the file that I created. This is an Excel spreadsheet called IIF Learning but it's in Excel. Now what you do is you type in the specific code with the specific text up he, uh, to the left and on the side and then in the center is the actual data that gets imported as transactions into QuickBooks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn red. I'm going to turn all of the code items to red because changing the color won't make a difference. Now you can see the code that you need to study and learn and memorize are in red and what's remaining in black is the actual data that will go into the fields of the transactions. QuickBooks will know what type or what kind of transaction it is based on the data. And what you're looking at here in amount are the debits and the credits. So as I said a moment ago, you have to understand a little bit about the idea of debits and credits to be able to understand what the IIF file is doing. And uh, basically, here's the data. So this would be the date of the first transaction. These would be the accounts and the chart of accounts that change. And these would be, this would be the money amounts of that transaction. Same thing here. Here's the date for that transaction. Here's the account for that transaction. Here's the name of the person involved in the transaction, such as the vendor or the customer or whatever. And of course, here is, here are the money amounts with some other information. Now we have the memo field all the way here. Now I'm going to prove to you that you have the ability to change the data before it goes into QuickBooks. So for the first transaction on January 4th, instead of $20, let's make it $440. So you have one minus 444, and you have one positive 444. That comes from the ideas of debits and credits. And let's add to this memo the word hello. Now what about the second transaction on July 17th where the two accounts are PayPal and other expenses and the name is Netflix. Let's leave Netflix as the name of the vendor in this case. But instead of $65, let's put minus 555 and where it's positive, let's put positive 55, oops, excuse me, 555. So we change some of the data, and after it imports into QuickBooks, you'll see those are the money amounts. Now, for the February 18th, back in 2016, these are the two accounts that change, PayPal and other income. But instead of 110 and a negative 110, let's put, by the way, you'll notice the positive this time is on the right and the negative is on the left, because this is a different type of transaction. It's going into income. So as I said, if you studied debits and credits, 
you would understand why the previous ones on the right were negative, but this one on the right is positive, and the other one is negative. But it doesn't matter. Let's leave the sign. Let's change this to positive 2, 22, just to show we can change the data. Negative 2, 2, 2. So for this second one, we'll put the memo as high. And for the third one, we'll put the memo as blah, blah, blah. So all we did was change the money amounts of the transaction. Everything else was pre-programmed in its proper position. And we added a memo. So when you learn IIF programming, not only do you learn the specific coding and the specific words, but you will learn the specific position in the spreadsheet that the data has to be arranged in in order to import smoothly into QuickBooks. Now the name of this file is IIF Learning. So now we've changed the code and we've changed the data and we're ready to import these three transactions into QuickBooks seamlessly. And now we're ready to do the remaining steps. First, we should save the file after the changes. Now, we should save it in TXT format. I found out the hard way you should not save it as an Excel spreadsheet. Leave it as a TXT format that Excel is reading. And again, when you formally study this programming language, IIF, you'll understand why this is. Remember, this video is just a brief overview. Now, we'll use Windows to change the file extension to IIF. So we'll come back to Excel and quit. And now we will, we will find this is it. This right here, let's move this over. This right here is the TXT file that we were looking at from Excel. Now we will rename it with the IIF format. Notice as soon as we change it to the IIF file extension, Windows sees it as a QuickBooks file. So then the next step is import into QuickBooks. So in the top left in the main menu, click File, Utilities, Import, IIF. Now we have to find the IIF file that we just saved. And it was, uh, I think it was Learn, uh, IIF Learning. So we double click. And it says, oh, your data has been imported. Very good. Now, how can we check to see if the data that we altered has been imported? Well, I arranged my journal to have the most recent transactions right at the top. And when you click there, you can see there's the 444, and there's the memo we put. There's the 333, and there's the memo we put. There's the payee. So the three recently entered transactions here are the ones that were just entered from the IIF file, and you can see they are altered in the way that we changed them, and that's how they came into QuickBooks. And that's how you do it. So IIF programming is not for everyone. You do need some level of programming skills, and there are a lot more details, but at least this video gave you some sense of what it is, so you can consider it as one of your file transaction import options.